Would that, could I have my slide on? Ah, uh, great. Mm -hmm. So uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to give, a, give this talk. And uh, I want to tell you about the uh, bounds on the Mary amplitude in the context of conformal field theory. And this is a work in progress with Matthew Dodderson. Uh, he was a student of Eva Silverstein at Stanford and is currently a postdoc at uh, Cabri IPMU. He told me he's going to be watching this from Tokyo. So hi, Matthew. Can you hear me? <laughs> OK. So, uh, so I want to talk about the Marin representation of conformal field theory amplitude. And uh, this was known from the 70s. But its relation to ADHDFT correspondence became clearer, first by the work by uh, Gerhard Mack, followed by Ahuao Penedones and many others. And let me first define the uh, Merlin amplitude. So you start with a, a conformal field theory in D dimension and consider correlation function of CFT on the sphere, D sphere. And then you're going to do this transformation with this set of variable. And this M is the Merlin amplitude. And uh, if you look at this, uh, it looks like uh, it's a Mandelstam variable that satisfies the same property. If you parameterize gamma ij as a product of p's, the momenta, satisfying this on shell condition as if the uh, 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 mass is given by the conformal dimension with mo momentum conservations, then, then it satisfies this relation. But there are various kinematic constraints because you are calculating this with this amplitude. And if you ca count the number of uh, uh, independent variables, independent Merlin variables subject to this constraint, you find that this parameterization works. Jac Jacobian is invertible, provided that these p-bytes are actually momenta in d plus 1 dimension. Now, we, I thought we started with conformal field theory in d dimension. So what's the momentum in d plus 1 dimensions doing? Holography. So, uh, so Penedones, uh, first Mark pointed out that if you write it in this way, this M satisfies property as if it is an S matrix of uh, a certain uh, field theory. And Penedones made that correspondence more precise by conjecturing this relation between the flat space amplitude and the Merlin amplitude that goes into here in the context of ADHDFT correspondence. Namely, if you have uh, ADHDFT correspondence, then there are indeed some string theory in d plus 1 dimensional antiveta space. So that's where d plus 1 should come from. And then provided that you probe the energy region bigger than ADS scale, then you should have this relation. That was, uh, 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 by the way, this uh, omega and theta are polar coordinate for these sets of momentum. So omega is the overall scale, overall scale of the momentum. OK? And uh, so this is a relation. And uh, uh, so, so we're going to assume this relation and use that uh, to, st to study the relation between the correlation function uh, of conformal field theory and flat space amplitude are probed in this high energy region. Now, scattering amplitude satisfies various interesting phenomena, such as uh, gross Mende growth in high energy scattering in flat space. The Walsh is supposed to grow when the energy becomes energy in the fixed angle becomes large compared to string scale. And also eventually that you're going to start forming black hole and that's going to evaporate. How are you going to see that in ads -CFT correspondence is an interesting question. And this formula gives us a way to probe such uh, procedure. I should point out that this relation is only valid in this energy scale because flat space amplitude doesn't know about the ADS scale. So for example, when the energy becomes too large, gross Mendel string worksheet starts growing bigger than ADS scale. Black hole can become bigger than ADS scale. Then this amplitude won't know about it. So this is, so, so, so there is some limit of how much you can do about this and we'll be careful about it. The main question is that what gross Mendel and those things mean in the context of dual CFT. And I will try to partially answer these questions. So we can, do, we can start with some exercises. So we, since we have this relation between Mary amplitude and flat space amplitude, and we know something about flat space amplitude, so we can just plug in those formula into this relation and see what you get. So for example, if you have a point particle scattering in ADS, and if the amplitude, uh, you just consider three level Witten diagram, the amplitude will be polynomial in momentum. And if you plug this into here and do the integral, you get the same power. The, 
if you are interested in gross mende effect, where the uh, energy is bigger than string scale, then string worsies start growing. And so you have some function f of theta where amplitude decays exponentially. So this is much softer decay, the much, much faster decay, softer u ultraviolet behavior compared to the particle amplitude. But so you still get the power behavior like that. And if you have stri strong gravity effects such as black hole formation and evaporation, you can uh, estimate the effect like that with different angular dependence and you get still the power. So you still get the power and this is interesting, but pay attention to the fa fact, and this is going to be important, that uh, these power depends on the conformal dimension of the external operator. By the way, this behavior is very similar to the one that found by Polsinski and Strasserer in 2001, two decades ago. And they use a formula which is very similar to this one, except that they don't have this exponential factor. And that's because uh, we are looking at different uh, uh, kind of uh, configuration uh, of uh, strings in ADS. So let me summarize. So if you plug in known property of flat space amplitude, then you have these power behavior, but exponents are different depending on point particle limit and stringy effect. Interestingly, stringy regime and uh, strong gravity regime scales in a similar way, and I'm gonna tell you why, but with different angular dependence. Uh, I, I of course, flat space amplitude doesn't know about ADS, so you must make sure that uh, this don't conflict with that. So if you, if you have too much energy, the gross Mende amplitude as uh, string worksheet start to become bigger than ADS scale. In order to prevent that, we're gonna postulate this, you can postulate this relation where string length is a geometric mean of ADS radius and Planck length, so that this goes over here before uh, uh, gross Mende uh, 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 worksheet become bigger than ADS scale. So this is nice, but this is just an exercise. The question is that how do you see, how do you can probe this type of effect in the original CFT amplitude? What you can do to, to probe in this area by looking at physical observable, which is a, 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 a correlation function of CFT? The answer was already given by uh, Juan Maldacena and David Simon Zafin and Ziboedov, excuse me, Sasha, sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 four years ago, two of the authors are here, so they can, they can correct me if I'm mistaken. The bulk point singularity. And uh, so let me first explain this. We can do it in any dimension, but let me explain this in the context of ADS3 CFT2 because uh, uh, notations are simpler in lower dimension. So in that case, you consider a four point correlation function. And then you have six gamma function in the many amplitude, but the kinematics makes two of them the same. So you have three square of gamma functions, many amplitude and some kinematic factor where Z is a harmonic ratio as usual. And I assume for simplicity that all the deltas are the same. And first you can ask in, in which regime large gamma dominates this amplitude, okay? So, so you are interested in when this amplitude is dominated by large gamma. So we can approximate gamma function by starting formula. And then you can, you, and also when gamma is large, actually it turns out that everything sum up to exponent, exponent. And then angular integral, so you have two gamma, so one is overall scale and the other is angular between them. The angular integral can be done by saddle point and it's actually become function of the harmonic ratio of the four point. So you just get this amplitude. So we know that this is a power. We, we learned that this is a power, and this is an exponential. So there is a competition between power and the exponential. And then, if provided that uh, this is the uh, order one, then you land on the saddle point where omega is order one, given by delta. Okay, so that's not very large in general. So in order to make the saddle point very large, where we, we can probe this uh, uh, area that we are interested in, we need to make this small. But we can make this small when this is going to be one. So that requires minus of absolute value of z is equal to one plus absolute value of one minus z. Okay, so we need to solve this equation. The left hand side is negative, the right hand side is positive. So how you can, how you can solve this relation? Well, you cannot solve this relation in flat space, obviously, but you can solve this if you, go, if you do analytic continuation to Lorentzian signature space. 
So you start from 4.0 uh, in t equal 0 plane, but you can move this in the time direction where two of them pairs up to go to time direction. And so you start with this, this point in complex plane, z plane, but then as you go from t equal 0 to t equal pi, the z goes around both 0 and 1, and the z bar goes around 1 only. So what happens is that the, the minus absolute value of z, which is actually minus square root of z z bar, goes to plus, and which becomes z. And the right-hand side, this goes to the same thing because both z and z bar goes around 1. And then, but z is greater than 1 in the end, so it becomes z minus 1. So z is equal to 1 minus z minus 1. So it's, 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 it's sort of the relation. And so therefore, what you, have, what you see is that after analytic continuation where t is moved from 0 to pi, this actually becomes like that. And when z equals z bar, in the end, the exponent becomes small. So here is a summary of this. In this conformal correlation function in CFT2, the marine amplitude near this bulk point singularity looks like that. And in, in this case, what happens is that there is actually a bulk point in ADS3, which can be connected to foil point on the boundary by light-like geodesic. And Landau pointed out that when something like that happens in con uh, con quantum field theory, there can be singularity. And indeed, what happens is that as z goes to z bar, the, the competition between the power here and the exponential makes it so that saddle point goes very large. And then if you assume that you only have flat space Witten diagram, then it gives you the power singularity, which is a Landau singularity. And you can repeat this exercise in any dimensions. And then what you see is that this type of Landau singularity happens for correlation function 3, 4 point, 5 point, all the way to d plus 2 point. Whereas in the generic conformal field theory, you would expect, since this is a conformal field theory in d dimension, you would expect up to d plus 1 point correlation function. So you don't expect in generic CFT to have bulk point singularity for d plus 2 point function, such as 4 point function in CFT2. But in ADS, if you assume a, a point particle Witten diagram, then you see bulk point singularity. So the question is that what happens when d equal, uh, uh, n equal d plus 2, where you don't expect CFT singular singularity in generic CFT, whereas bulk Witten uh, 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 diagram give you singularity. Well, string theory should help us. So, so string effect, so let's look at the string effect. So this is a gross Mende formula, which gives you marine amplitude like this. If you plug this into that, so I told you, remember that I mentioned that you pay attention to the fact that uh, uh, there is a, a de dependence on the conformal dimension the power, even though these are power behavior, but the power behavior depends on the conformal dimension. And indeed, that's what helps us because that makes this combined to one over omega square, this is integrable. So that means that even if you set z equal z bar, the integral converges and you don't get singularity. So this is how you resolve the uh, bulk Landau singularity. The uh, gross Mende behavior gives you this uh, power behavior, but it's suppressed by this uh, uh, dependence on the conformal dimension, which makes this amplitude convergent. So in general, you can see that the Landau singularity in d equal 2 and n equal 4 can be resolved if the many amplitude decays faster than uh, omega to the 3 minus 4 delta, so that this integral is convergent without this factor. And this bound should hold uh, for generic conformal field theory. You can see that this kind of behavior is very much reminiscent of some of the uh, ultraviolet uh, scaling property of the flat space S matrix. And indeed, there are relations between them. So if you look at the original uh, uh, Penedones formula, it looks like that. So that means that omega, if suppose, for example, flat space amplitude decays faster than any power of omega, such as in the case of gross Mende amplitude, then, then this integral would be convergent without this exponential factor. Then in that case, by simple scaling argument, you can prove this relation, which is stronger, a bit stronger than this relation. So it's interesting that, uh, in fact, uh, provided that with this mild ultraviolet softness, you can satisfy this bound, okay? 
Uh, I have, we have not been able to figure out exactly how to saturate this, but uh, this, is, uh, this is interesting fact. And so this, is, this, I hope, explains the title of my talk, the bound on the Merlin amplitude. This is what we propose, that uh, uh, Merlin amplitude of generic CFT should satisfy this relation. And uh, the, the, the violated only in the limit when you, go, you take omega first, uh, you take string scale and a Planck scale go to zero first, before you take uh, 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 omega to be large. This can be generalized to any dimension by simple scaling argument. So for example, for general D and uh, uh, N, uh, uh, D two plus two point correlation function, the Landau singularity is resolved if and only if many amplitude decays faster than this so that the similar kind of integral is convergent. And you can show that, uh, si that this is a general relation in uh, Penedonis uh, uh, relation. And in that case, uh, again, if the flat space amplitude decays faster than any power of omega, the Mary amplitude should decay, satisfying this bound. How am I doing with time? I think I'm doing very well. Uh, so, uh, so in fact, you can do a little bit better. So in fact, if you substitute this directly into here, so with these are two relations we used. In fact, you find this relation, which is actually what you find in equation 5.10 in uh, the paper by uh, Marusena, Simons Duffy, and Ziboedo. And uh, uh, in there, in, so actually, we, we have been very careful with the contour of the integral. Uh, so they, 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 in their integral, the contour go from zero to infinity. And here the contour goes to minus i infinity to plus i infinity. So when you do this uh, uh, combination, the one of the zero to i infinity can go to from zero to infinity. And then there is a remaining piece. And the remaining piece happens so that they are actually uh, finite even if you remove the string scale and Planck scale. So if you are interested in the kind of behavior of what happens when string scale and uh, Planck scale become large, then it, the, you get the formula which coincide with uh, the formula that uh, uh, they have proposed. <coughs> and in fact, uh, if you plug in gross Mendel amplitude into this, you can actually do, carry out this amplitude uh, integral explicitly and express everything in terms of a confluent hypergeometric function. Now this looks complicated, but we found this formula really beautiful because I cannot explain it in the remaining five minutes. But uh, uh, in fact, uh, this formula very nicely interpolate between the apparent uh, bulk point singular behavior to the smooth uh, ultraviolet behavior, basically cut off by the gross Mende type uh, behavior for this sense shorter than the string scale. Now you can ask, well, what happened to the strong gravity effect? And if you evaluate all these effects, you find that uh, actually uh, when you, so in M theory, you don't have this uh, string effect, but in the case when the theory is embedded in string theory, this effect wash out the string, uh, uh, stringy effect, a uh, strong gravity effect uh, for reasons such as this. So if you start with gross Mendel amplitude, you can check to see in which, uh, 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 for which omega that this integral is dominated, and this integral is dominated by this regime. And uh, you can evaluate the effect, and you can compare that. You can also comp uh, calculate the effect by strong gravity effect. And that, the latter is exponentially smaller than this one. So, so, so in, the, in the generic situation, the gross Mendel behavior, even in the short, uh, z, goes, z equals z bar, z minus z bar goes to zero limit, uh, dominates. However, there is a one important uh, uh, thing that to pay attention, that is that there is angular dependence here and here. and these. This is a gross Mende uh, angle dependence, and there is also a depe different dependence for the uh, uh, strong gravity effect, and these, uh, these dependence are different. In the gross Mende case, it goes like theta square log theta. So when theta is going to sm small, then actually this frequency becomes large, uh, this energy becomes large. So in the limit of small angle, the collinear limit, the iconal limit, the amplitude can go over to Planck scale. So that means that there is a window where you take the small angle limit, you, can, you may be able to start looking at the strong gravity effect. And in fact, uh, uh, in the case of D equal to three, namely, so in the case of D equal to two, you don't have it because you don't have bulk gra graviton in CFT three. But in CFT four, uh, if you take the collinear limit, you can estimate it. And actually, the, the, there are two, so, so 
gross Mendel f of theta decays faster than this. This is just log. Here is a theta square log theta. So this decays faster. So, so in this case, actually, the strong uh, uh, gravity effects start dominating in the cross. So there is a crossover between these effects. And uh, this is something I'm currently investigating. And recently, there was actually also a nice paper by uh, Cardona uh, 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 last month. So let me summarize. So in the context of ADS-CFT correspondence, high energy scattering phenomena can be probed at the Landau singularity, where large omega dominate in the Mering amplitude. And the resolution of the Landau singularity in ADS d plus 1 with d plus 2 point amplitude requires this uh, universal bound. And that's the uh, sort of meaning of the title of my talk. And gross Mende behavior actually satisfies this with margin of 1. And uh, we found this analytic formula. I'm so proud of this formula. Actually, this is done by Matthew. Uh, but, uh, 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 so it's, it nicely interpolated this behavior to this behavior. And uh, strong gravity effect uh, 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 dominate in collinear effect. So actually, I'm finishing, but I would like to end with one more thing. So, so we, uh, we have been doing this Asian winter school supported by Cabri Foundation. This is our 14th uh, meeting going to be held in Japan, January 2020. And uh, we have an excellent uh, list of speakers. Uh, we felt that any future string series should know a little bit about machine learning and quantum information. So we also have four lectures each by expert in this area. This is actually a series uh, uh, take, uh, uh, hosted in turn by four th these four countries in Asia. And so we're going to announce the application very soon. So I'd like to encourage that to apply to it. Uh, so Liam McAllister was very worried about uh, the amount of time allocated to him. And he was uh, negotiating time with Igor, so I'm going to give him more time. So I'm finishing three minutes before the end. Thank you. OK, thank you for a great talk, Hiroshi. Uh, I guess uh, David has a question. So beautiful. Um, I had two questions. One. Yes. I, I tried to do this many years ago and didn't push it through, so congratulations. But the, uh, I, was, I was trying to understand, um, so you, if you take string theory, you end up in, in uh, the classical approximation of the e to the minus energy squared that you use. So you are talking but, about uh, this, yeah. this type of behavior? So, but let's say we put a, a general power there, omega to the p. Yeah, so you uh, can have any power here, you still get the same behavior. Yeah, right. So what, so you, as you know, and, and you and Paul tried to sum the right. divergent series, and you know, typically when you do that with factorials, that gets reduced to o omega, to the first power, which is... It's, it still gives a, gives a behavior. Yeah, I understand. So, but what in the CFT depends on that power? You, actually, so what I was, hoping to get when I un unsuccessfully looked at this. This y correspondence yeah. was a bound on P. Yeah, good. So, so I don't have a perfect answer to this, but this power of F, of course, depends on the, uh, the, the power of omega for a trivial reason. And uh, as far as we can see, for example, so for example, this uh, 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 strong gravity effect, let's see, where do I put it? Uh, I must have put it somewhere. Oh. It stopped working. I'm sorry. Uh, hmm? It is frozen. Uh, OK, so I was about to show the uh, 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 strong gravity effect amplitude. That had a different exponent. Yes. And, uh, but we didn't quite see, see the physical difference, because as far as this integral is convergent, you get the same power behavior for energy. So. Yeah. OK. Second question was, uh, so you use holography and perturbative high energy behavior to learn about large frequency behavior of the Mellon amplitude. Right. But, so that's using string theory to learn about CFT. Right. But what is it in CFT that requires power behavior for large omega? Is, are there bounds, unitarity, something? Ooh, right. Yeah, so, well, as I said, uh, if you don't 
uh, uh, expect this Landau singularity, you, you get many amplitude bounded by power, certain power. And uh, yeah, so I think it's, it's, uh, we, that's, uh, for so, so far, that's as much as I can say. It could be related to some more general consideration of unitarity and uh, bootstrap and crossing relation. That would be interesting. Uh, yeah, we, we have been thinking about this. Thank you for asking. Okay, more questions, comments? Um, sorry, but m maybe this where, is... Where is that? Oh, okay, oh, there, hi. okay. Um, maybe I missed that, this, but, but it, uh, the, the exponential in gross mende, that depends on the loop. Oh, this is tree-level gross mende. This tree-level. Yeah, and so that was what David was asking yeah, about. Exactly. So, so, I so I did, I, I, following up with gross mende, Paul mende, and I did Risa mention of the amplitude that gave a different power in the exponent. Okay. But for each loop order, you get the same omega exponential omega square behavior. But that is more and more suppressed for higher genus, it's suppressed by one over genus kind of things. So if you resum that, if exponential of omega square turned into exponential of omega. But it still has the same sort of power behavior for many amplitude. So in two dimensions, you used uh, the fact that um, in the CFT, the bulk point limit should be regular, right? But in principle, you have more than that. You can bound the correlation function by the Euclidean correlator. And so it's not only bounded, but you, you can put probably some bounds on the ah. value. And so... Uh, so you can say that there could be even stronger bounds. Right. So my question is, can you use this Euclidean ah. later to put even stronger bound and say oh, something. Oh, well, yeah. we, we certainly haven't thought about it, okay. but we should think about it. We're going to do it right after this talk. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, did you hear that? <laughs> okay. No more? Okay, let's thank uh, Hiroshi again for great talk.